Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. In today's video, this is for you out of towners, those planners who come out to Universal who are coming out on a trip. We're going to talk about how to get from LAX to Universal Studios, especially in a cost effective way. I know a lot of you watch the channel, you might be locals and drive to the parks, or you, uh, you, know, you stay in Southern California, but I know a lot of you also watch the channel and are flying in, like a lot of you I know flew in to Super, Super Nintendo World and the like, and you're obviously coming into Disneyland and all the regional parks out here. Now, I've been following a lot of, I follow a lot of Facebook groups, the Universal and Disney Facebook groups, and a lot of people constantly, in fact, I, before I recorded this video, I saw another one. How's the best way to get from LAX to Universal Studios Hollywood? Same thing. What's the best way to get from LAX to Disneyland? So I'm going to make two separate videos. We're going to start off with the Universal, and then we're going to go to Disneyland on, uh, later on, maybe next week. We're going to I'm going to tell you the best ways to get from LAX to Universal Studios Hollywood and Disneyland, but in this video, it's all about Universal, baby. Okay. So you land. Actually, first of all, I'm going to show you, tell you two ways to get to Universal from LAX and Burbank. One, if you fly into LAX, it's a little bit cheaper and it has a little more destinations, so most of you will probably be coming from LAX, but side note, if you fly into Burbank, it's a little bit, it's much closer actually to Universal. It's just maybe about 15 minutes away. So if you fly into Burbank Airport, you can just Uber. Uber or taxi, it's about a 15 minute drive. I've left, um, I've taken people to the airport from Universal, to Burbank Airport from Universal about 12 minutes now is even in rush hour traffic so super close I just you uber or maybe even your, your hotel may even have a shuttle that get, picks up from the airport because it's that close so Burbank is no problem but LAX is a little bit farther away so let's go get into that one right now all right so there's multiple ways multiple ways you can do this you can uber or lift or take a taxi um, that's the easiest way it's also the most expensive way I don't suggest doing that um, if you have some time because there's really more cost-effective ways and in terms of time wise especially come during rush hour um, there's other way than transit way maybe faster or just as fast again if you come during you know the nighttime 9 10 p.m. or in the early morning depending on the day um, Ubering or lifting may, or if, if you're renting a car, uh, that just may be the easiest thing. But if you're coming during a rush hour, just don't want to deal with the Uber lift prices, yeah, take the flyaway. The flyaway is a service, a bus service, it's a big bus that is run through LA World Airports. That's uh, who owns LAX and Burbank Airport. But they run two routes they go from LAX to Van Nuys and LAX to Union Station. The bus is only nine, about nine dollars per per person per trip, and they come every 20 minutes, which is pretty decent. I mean, it could be a little faster, but by the time you get a luggage or whatever, if you miss one, another one will probably be coming within 10 minutes. By the time you know the luggage and you come down, you sit on the side, you sit and stand on the curb. They're very easy to see flyaway signs. You got to make sure you're choosing the flyaway to Union Station, though. It's Union Station in downtown Los Angeles. People, are, you're probably wondering, Ethan, why Union Station when Van Nuys is closer? It's Van Nuys is close uh, to Universal. And that's because Union Station will have a direct subway link to Universal Studios Hollywood, whereas Van Nuys does not. That's right. Once you get to Union Station, you take that. Uh, it stops right at Union Station. Then you take the escalator down to the Red Line subway. It's the B line now, B as in boy, line, and. The trip will take you about a 20 minute subway trip all the way to the Universal City Station. It's almost at the very end of the line. North Hollywood is at the end of the line and Union Station is at the other end. So basically doing the whole line almost. And the whole line takes about 25 minutes. So 20 minutes to get to the Universal City Station. And it says Universal City Station. You get off there. And then you get off and then Universal actually has a shuttle, a tram that takes you from the station to City Walk. Yeah, it's pretty cost effective. Um, the, the subway is only $1.75 per person for yeah, two hours of free transfers, but you don't need a transfer anyway. You just stand the same subway and it's fully underground, so it's very quick. And again, you get there in about 20 minutes. With the, let's see, that's 20 minutes plus the flyaway, the flyaway bus to get from downtown to LAX and no traffic, it actually will take you another maybe just 20 minutes. So it's a 40 minute total trip. If you're in some traffic, because it will, there has no stops to fly away, it just goes from LAX right to Union Station and it takes the freeways, as if you're in a car. So that's also a good thing, because it's not like you're sitting in all these stops. It's literally the same thing as if you're in a car, it just, you're in a bus. Um, and the trip, 
on the freeway in traffic and might take a bit, maybe take an hour total, 40 minutes, maybe take 40 minutes from LAX to Union Station and then 20 minutes via the subway. So it might take an hour total, but if you're in rush hour traffic anyway, taking an Uber or Lyft, it could take an hour or more anyway, just sitting in a car and you're paying, paying a lot more money. Round trip for the flyaway and the subway would be what, 10 bucks, 10, 11 dollars per person versus potentially 65 or 70 dollars for Uber. Also, where you're staying factors in, right? If you're staying in Hollywood, uh, if you're taking the subway, you know, staying more places or more affordable places farther away from the park is possible. If you stay in Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard, such as the W uh, on Vine Street, that has a direct, the subway station is built into that hotel. So you come right down your elevator and go right to the subway station, take the subway to, you know, um, at that point, it's maybe like three stops. Yeah, three stops or so, so it's about 10 minutes, um, five, 10 minutes. Take it to Universal City Station. So uh, the tram picks you up, takes you to City Walk. The trams, by the way, they run until like an hour or so after City Walk closes. So the park closes at 10, City Walk closes at 11. The trams adapt to take you to the station run until about midnight. So you don't have to worry about the tram leaving you or anything or, or, or missing it. Last them for the night because they want they run well after about an hour after City Walk closes, which is always going to be well after the park closes. If you're staying at the, one of the hotels, the Hilton or Sheraton, um, at Universal, again, very easy peasy there. The tram will take you to City Walk and you can take a short walk down. There's the little pedestrian bridge that takes you to the Sheraton and Hilton. Or, at that point, if you want, you can walk up the hill. It's about a mm, seven minute walk up the hill, but it's, it's up a hill. Um, and just skip the tram entirely, but that is totally up to you. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you get to Universal pretty quickly um, via transit. Again, you can rent a car and take an Uber and Lyft if you want. But if you really look at the flyaway times and depending on when your plane lands and stuff like that, you know, it's really more cost effective and takes almost nearly the same amount of time to take the um, bus to the subway. And I know someone think, oh my God, the subway is not safe. I've, I do it all the time. Uh, it's pretty safe. There's a lot of people. It's very popular. It's the ninth busiest subway in the country. So there's a lot of people and it's pretty quick and efficient. I think you'll really enjoy it. And that is it for this video. If you liked this video, press that thumbs up button. Subscribe for more theme park updates and more how-to tips and tricks like this. And uh, yeah, let me know if, you, if you've done this option before. Let me know how it worked out in the comments below. And I hope you guys enjoy your stay at Universal Studios Hollywood. And if you're planning to come, in the future, I hope this little tip and trick has helped you save some cash. Other than that, guys, have a magical day. Actually, have a universal day. And don't forget, if you are purchasing universal tickets, I have a link down below to get away today. Um, you can use the code TPW to get some discounts on universal tickets. As always, have an epic day. Do you guys want discount tickets to theme parks, Disney, Universal, Legoland, SeaWorld, all of them? Well, guess what? I can get you that. Thanks to the folks that get away today. We have a referral code down below in the link. You can click and get discounts and for all your vacation packages. Also, you can get tickets or discount tickets for single day tickets as well. You just click on the code, click whatever theme park you want to go to in California or Florida, and then type uh, use the code TPW. That is capital T P N W. That's it. Disney, Universal, all of them. And they, if you add multiple days, the bigger the discount. Again, use that referral link down below. Uh, you'll get lots of discounts, including single day, vacation packages, even on hotels. And use that code TPW. And thank you to the folks that get away today for helping us out here and helping you get some more discounts. All right, let's get right back to the video.